Did you know that Joy to the World, like everyone's almost favorite Christmas song, um, was never written as a Christmas carol? It was actually written by a great hymn writer, Isaac um, Watts. Right? He's written a million different hymns, but this one he actually wrote as a poem. It's a poem from uh, Psalm 98. It's that psalm we all know. It, it's uh, Sing a Joyful Noise to the Lord. I'm pretty sure Evie was probably... Um, thinking as I was singing, like the pastor's just singing a joyful noise unto the Lord, that noise behind me as I was singing this morning. <laughs> but Psalm 98 is a psalm about joy, and it's really a psalm that looks forward to our joy in Jesus. And Isaac Watts, as he wrote this poem, wrote it so that we could know the fullness of the joy we have in Jesus Christ. So he's, he's written it with that prophecy fulfilled, or at least as far as Christ's first advent. And then um, Lowell Mason, who was <clears throat> the organist and um, like the music leader at Park Street Church in the early 1800s, put that poem to music. And as soon as he did that in the 19th century, Joy to the World became like the biggest Christmas hit. Well, while Isaac Watts never intended that to be a Christmas song, a Christmas carol, um, it's shockingly similar to another songwriter's song. And that songwriter is Mary the mother of Jesus. She wrote a song in scripture as well. It's in um, Luke chapter one. It's called the Magnificat, which is Latin for magnifies, where she talks about how um, God has magnified her soul. I'm going to read it to you now. It's Luke chapter one, verses 46 through 49. I'm just going to read the first four verses of that song. As Kenny puts it up there for you to read. Um, it is on, I hope you find it here in your pew Bibles if you like. It's page 804, 804 in the Pew Bibles, page 1017, 1017 in the large print Bibles. Hear now the word of the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for your Holy Spirit to create great wonder in us right now. Wonder of your love. Wonder at these inspired words of this song by Mary. God, grow us in truth and grace that overflows in radiant joy. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. You can't walk away from this song by Mary. You've got to read through the whole thing later. Maybe go home, um, read beginning Luke chapter 1, verse 46, all the way through the Magnificat through Mary's song. You can't look at that song that she wrote. You can't look at joy to the world and, and sing joy to the world without realizing that Jesus is our greatest source of joy. Jesus is our greatest source source of joy. There, there's no other joy. There is no other joy in this world or anywhere else like Christians have in Jesus. And Mary points out three particular uh, elements of that joy which make it so great. For instance, our great joy in Jesus radiates. Our great joy in Jesus radiates. Have you ever looked at a pregnant woman and noticed how she glows? Like pregnant women glow. They just do. There's like a glow about them when they're, when they're pregnant. There's a brightness about them as they carry this little tiny human being that's yet to be born within them. They just shine all over. And I'm sure Mary had that kind of glow too. But that's not the kind of glow that, or, or, or brightness that, that Mary's talking about in our passage this morning. She's got a joy that's in a completely different zip code, that's in a whole nother world. It's like radioactive joy. When she says, verse 46, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. This word that she uses for soul and the, and the same word she uses for spirit, they both have this sense of, of, of being, it's my whole being. I'm like all in on this. Everything that I have is, is radiating this joy. That's what she's saying there. In other words, she is magnifying the Lord. She is rejoicing in God, her Savior, with everything that she's got. This is a song for Mary's heart. This is not just some sentimental little song she's making up. This is a very personal song from her heart. She's put everything she's got behind it. It's a worship song, 
a song that bursts out in praise to her Lord and Savior. Now that's an important point. Right? She, she's not bursting out. She's not radiating that joy because she's got a baby inside. She's not radiating that joy because that baby inside is the Messiah. It's not a self-centered joy. No, her soul, everything that she has within her is magnifying the Lord. Her spirit's rejoicing over God himself. It is God that she has the joy for. See, it's not about what God is giving her in the baby or, or anything else or, or the fact that she's going to be called blessed. That's not what is driving her joy. Her joy is driven by God himself. It's about her joy in God. It's about her enjoyment of the person of God that magnifies her with all that she's got and that she rejoices. St. Augustine said, enjoyment is the highest form of love. Enjoyment is the highest form of love. I mean, think about it. Think about who you enjoy being with the most. Isn't that, aren't those some of the people you love the most that you enjoy being with the most? Mary was looking beyond the gifts that, that, that she would receive to, to, to give praise to the one who gave her the gift. She wanted to magnify. She wanted to enlarge. She wanted to show how great, not the gift is, but how great God is. She knew she was blessed, but she wanted to show how great the blesser is, not just the blessing. That's what joy in Jesus does. It radiates that joy out to other people. When you see who God is, when you know him in Christ, you can't help but radiate. You can't help but magnify the joy that you have in Jesus. Your enjoyment of God is like plain to see by, by everyone around you if you have joy in Jesus. And the fuller our understanding of God, the greater our ability to enlarge him. The more we know this God we worship, the more we understand what he's done for us in the cross and the resurrection, the more we're going to radiate that joy. The more time we spend looking at him and less on ourselves, less on our circumstances, the more joy we're going to have, the more it's going to radiate, the more it's going to beam, the more it's going to magnify God. And the more you do that, the more it's going to push out all those other things that drag on your joy. As we come into Christmas, I guarantee there are a lot of things right now just dragging on your joy, yanking your joy down. But the more you focus on the Lord, the more you focus on the depth of what Jesus has done for you, the more it pushes out self-pity. The more it pushes out your self-focus, and we've all got a lot of that, the more it pushes out your frustration. You can't truly know Jesus. You can't truly experience a relationship with Jesus and not radiate joy. Look at Mary's song. She didn't say, I'm making progress, God. I'm becoming more positive. I found this great technique for, for, for getting rid of negativity. That's a big thing these days, right? No, she says, I've been changed. Something from outside of me has changed me. I'll never be the same. And I'm radiating uncontrollably. I'm overtaken. And that's because our great joy in Jesus is received. Our great joy in Jesus is received. Our joy in Jesus is an outside-in joy. It comes from outside of us and finds its way inside of us. Mary sang, verse 47, God, my Savior, has looked on the humble estate of his servant. What is Mary doing there? She's confessing her inability to save herself. She's, say, she's not saying she's some co-redemptrix, okay? That, get that out of your mind. That's another religion. She's in need of herself, a savior, a savior to save her from her sins. Do you remember what the angel told Joseph, Matthew 121? She will bear a son. Mary will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will, what? Save his people from their sins. Not to give them their best life now, but to save them from their sins. Mary recognized her position. Mary was a sinner, a sinner in need of a Savior. That's why she praised God for providing the Savior, called him the Savior. Mary needs saving as much as you need saving, as much as I need saving. And by his grace, God saved her. He saw her humble estate. He saw Mary's lowly condition. And he did great things for her, like putting a child within her and sending her son 
to be a Messiah and Savior, but God reached down and saved Mary. This was very personal. He saved Mary as he can save you or me. And that's what brought about the joy that radiated from her. That's why she was like radioactive with joy because of her salvation. That's what brought about this miraculous change in her life. It wasn't chestnuts roasting up on an open fire. It wasn't Jack Frost nipping at your nose, little kids doing whatever they do. I forget. Something about mistletoe, turkey. I don't know. It's the God who saves and looks on those of humble estate, lifting them up out of sin and death and giving us the joy of our salvation, a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's something worth shouting about. God reaches down in mercy and like we just sang, lifts up the humble. Lifts up those who acknowledge that they're unworthy to stand before a holy God without a savior. Ironically, that theme of lowliness to greatness was the path of Jesus himself. It's what theologians call the great reversal in that God humbled himself to become a man to endure the painful, shameful death on the cross that saved us from our sins. And then having humbled himself, he was raised from the dead to be exalted and given all glory for doing what was impossible for you to do for yourself or me to do for myself or Mary to do for herself. Brothers and sisters, friends, if that doesn't break, cause you to break out in joy, there's nothing that's going to put joy in your heart. If you don't know Jesus in that way, you don't know Jesus yet. You don't recognize your humble estate. You somehow think that God owes you that maybe. Or you think too highly of yourself like you can save yourself. If you are humble to receive the gift of salvation from God, God will raise you up into the heavenlies. Raise you up out of sin and death and give you that soul, spirit-wrenching joy. The poor, the weary, the downtrodden, the humble find so much joy within because of what? Because of what God has done for them, bringing them up out of sin and death. It's so out of place in an age where we think everyone owes us, including God, isn't it? A lot of people think of God, maybe you, like God owes you something. Maybe judgment, right? That's about it. But he's made us worthy in Jesus. He has made us worthy in Jesus. And Mary recognizes this reality. She recognizes that great joy is ultimately received, received through the work of a Savior, the Savior that's in her womb. As the great Carol reminds us, joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth what? Receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. Right? And this happens. When this happens, when you prepare room in your heart for Jesus, you realize something else about your great joy. Our great joy in Jesus is empowering. Our great joy in Jesus is empowering. Can you guess what my favorite day of the week is? <laughs> no, you might think right for a pastor, but no, it's Sunday. Sunday is my favorite day of the week. It's Sunday because we all come together to worship because I get to be with you. There is nothing on earth that gives me as much more joy as Sunday morning and be with all of you. Thursday night is pretty close. But like the band's all here on Sunday, right? It's, it's a foretaste of heaven, right? We all see it. If you know Jesus, if you're part of this body of Christ, you know that this is where we experience the foretaste of heaven. It's when our joy in Jesus collectively radiate. It's like bouncing off these walls and we talk about the neighbors next door hearing us sing. It's true. It's when our joy tanks get filled up for the coming week. It's by the power of God that we've been given a joy we didn't possess. Mary sang, verse 49, for he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. Mary is saying, I've never been so emptied of myself and so filled with God. Do you know what that's like? To be so emptied of yourself and filled with God? Happens every day. We have to become less and less emptied of ourselves and more filled with God. But every Christian knows what Mary's talking about. Right? When you come to faith in Jesus Christ, you can sense the power of God upon you. You can sense the power of God's Spirit at work in you. First, He draws you to Jesus, and then His power abides with you in that journey. The power of God is literally intervening in your life 
all the time if you know Jesus. God's changing you. He's shaping you into who you're meant to be. More and more what you'll one day be on the other side of the journey. And you can see that right here on Sunday mornings when we worship together. You can see that foretaste. It causes me the greatest joy when I watch all of you worship. And I hope that doesn't sound creepy. <laughs> it really does. It gives me so much joy when I get to watch you worship. It's when I look around the room and think where you've been. When I think about the struggles you've been through. Think about the struggles you're going through. When I think of the tears and trials of the last week, the last month, the last several months, the last years, and yet here you are, worshiping with joy. You're singing. You're praising God with a joy like no other. You're radiating a joy that can't be explained apart from the power of Christ that's in you. I'd love to point out like 30 people in this room that I think of when I'm worshiping right now who are going through it but have so much joy. And that's empowering. That fuels my joy as I see him at work in you. And that joy in the Lord empowers more joy. It reverberates within this room, within the body of Christ, every single time that we gather. That doesn't happen online. Nehemiah and Ezra told the returning exiles on their day of worship as they gathered together, Nehemiah 8.10, the joy of the Lord is your strength. What is he saying? He's saying God is an infinite well of joy. God is the source of your joy. Jesus Christ is the source of your joy. Nehemiah, Ezra, and the people were ravaged by war. Right? They, they were weak. They weren't like the strong people. They were vulnerable. Yet God provided their source of joy, the infinite well of joy as they came together, as they continued on the journey that God had sent them. Jesus said if we abide in him, if we abide in the love that he gave us by laying down his life for us, that John 15, 11, my joy will be in you, that your joy may be full. Joy is part of the fruit of the spirit that God gives every believer in Christ. Joy. Every believer in Christ has some measure of joy. And that's not a stagnant joy. That's not a, a, a waning joy. It's a joy that's empowered and fueled by God's own spirit, radiating the joy we have in Jesus to a world in darkness, to a world in need of joy. And maybe to someone in this room in need of joy as they see you radiate. God has the power in Christ to give you the joy that you're missing. He does. If the foundation of your joy, of your, of your happiness, is your job, if it's a relationship, if it's approval of other people, if it's your possessions, if it's your abilities, if it's your accomplishments, then suffering and discomfort are going to rob you of joy. It will. But if your ultimate foundation is in Jesus, then suffering does what? It drives you closer to the source of your joy, the Lord. A source that can't be quenched. It isn't like we run out of joy. I've used up all my joy today, God. Infinite. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over the flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and, and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you was born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Jesus is your greatest source of joy. He's a joy offered to all people, a joy you will find by Hebrews 12 too, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the what? Joy set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. That joyous joy, that radiating victory is present at this table. For the joy that was set before him, Jesus went 